Okay, John, think. You just started the arc of Sans Red. You knew this was coming. There has to be a way to make a high color breakdown video work. The audience is counting on you to come up with some nuanced take on color philosophy. It's not like you can just do a video full of hot takes about how these decks make a mockery out of color identity, thus removing one of the defining features of CDH and Commander as a whole. Or maybe... Hello and welcome to another episode of Gemstone Mine. Today we have another lesson from CEDH. CDH is a metagame within the Commander format that sits at one extreme with highly consistent, highly efficient decks. Not all cards are equally powerful in all formats, or even in all metagames, but there are lessons to be learned from how players are brewing with some of the most powerful cards in Magic's history. And it shouldn't come as a surprise that one of the defining features of CEDH are high-color decks like four-color partner decks. And today, our lesson is going to focus on why these high-color decks tend to be on top of the metagame in CDH. Once again, before we get started, thank you for joining us. Things have been going really well so far over here for us on Commander Cookout Media Group. We're almost six months into it now, and I really hope you've been enjoying these episodes. If you have, be sure to leave a like and a subscribe or a comment or... I keep telling myself I'm going to learn what all of the different social media things are supposed to be, but eh, you know what? That's a Ryan problem. That's not a John problem. I also want to just say that as part of Commander Cookout Media Group, Gemstone Mine is sponsored by FusionGamingOnline.com. They're your source for all your gaming needs. So with the new set coming out that uh, Modern Horizons 3, by the time this video comes out, if I'm correct, there should be some really juicy stuff in that set. Leaks have been coming out, and some of it looks like it could be pretty exciting. And I know I'm going to be making some orders from FusionGamingOnline.com because, yes, while I live in the U.S., they do ship international, so they can get them down to me in Florida, even from the Great White North, with very little trouble. And if you use the promo codes that are on your screen or in the description of the episode, you too can save money when you order. That's FusionGamingOnline.com, your source for all your gaming needs. To start our lesson from CDH today, I want to take you back to the idyllic world of 2016, when Commander was all about two and three color decks. If you wanted to play a high color, five color deck, you had to play a Commander who cost specifically white, blue, black, red, green. That means a minimum mana value of five probably from at least five different sources just to cast your commander. And in this era, you had exactly 12 choices for your commander if you wanted to play a five color deck, fully a third of which were nothing more than just sliver commanders. You had another third that covered things like dragons, elementals, scarecrows, atogs. And rounding out the dirty dozen, you had Child of Alara, Progenitus, Corona the False God, and Chromat. Sure, some players were already using Rule Zero in order to play the four-color Nephilim from the original Ravnica block as their commanders, but if you were playing a five-color deck, you were saddled with a commander with a minimum mana value of five, who asked you to build around the deck in a very specific way, such as with a specific creature type, or with a specific game plan, or it was Chromat that was just kind of... What? What are you even supposed to be? What kind of fever dream are you? Is that... In short, there was a real cost to playing a five-color deck. For someone who wanted to play just five colors worth of good stuff, it wasn't uncommon for them to essentially just never cast their commander. Yes, I've seen more than a few Progenitus decks and even a Chromat deck, where never once were those things even cast. On the release, the Commander 2016 pre-cons changed everything in CDH and probably in Commander in general. The four color legendary creatures of Atraxa, Kyneos and Tiro, Brea, Saskia, and Yidris became immediately popular. And with Atraxa ultimately rising to the top of EDH Rack's most built Commander list almost immediately and staying there for years. We also got a cycle of 15 two color legendary partners who could partner with any other creature with partner and they did vary a little bit in power level. We'll come back to that in a moment. 
You see, the designers of Commander 2016 were worried that they couldn't find true identities for these four-color decks very easily. So, in order to get around that, they thought that one very interesting solution would be to take two-color partners and allow you to mash them together and create your own color identity for those decks. Some of these partners had a very unique spin on them, allowing you to build a deck that could do some really interesting things. For example, Rayhan was able to create a deck that were plus one, plus one counters matter in a Golgari inclusive color identity. Or Tana the Blood Sower, or Butt Sower, I guess I'm part of CCO Nation, so I gotta call it Butt Sower, really? No, no, we're calling her by her proper name, Tana the Blood Sower. She provided a really interesting source of tokens that you had to do some work to get some value out of. However, this cycle also included three partners who really stood out among the rest. Timna, Thrasios, and Krom, generic value engines who were essentially unlocking four colors worth of cards for your deck list with very little build around. Which, if you remember from back on the old channel, we talked about this as a form of low tension deck building is you could basically pick your good value engine commander and then pair them with whatever other partner you needed in order to get to the colors you wanted for your four color deck without sacrificing the whole value of the command zone for your deck. Coupled with mana bases, which we're going to talk about in a couple of moments, it was not particularly hard to build a very powerful deck which had access to basically every color you wanted to make your deck work. Since we saw the first round of two color commanders, we've also seen the list of five color commanders explode. Before the release of Modern Horizons 3 anyway, we are now up to 45 options. 20 of them can even be cast without having access to all five colors of mana, which kind of defeats the purpose in some players' eyes of them being five color commanders. You have cards like Golos and Kenrith, requiring very little colored mana investment in order to actually come down. And commanders like Najila and Sisei Weatherlight Captain don't even take five mana at all to cast, but still give you access to all five colors in your deck building. Gone are the days of trying to assemble Wooburg just so you can cast, ugh, Chromat. But you're probably saying, well, there's a price to pay when you're trying to build those high color decks. You pay for it by having a much less reliable mana base. And as we mentioned at the top of the episode, CDH is a format that's all about consistency. However, this is where we get to talk about fetch lands. Fetch lands are a cycle of lands which enter the battlefield untapped, and while they don't tap for any mana, you can tap, pay a life, and sacrifice those lands to put a land that meets at least one of those basic land types into play untapped. The original cycle of five from the original onslaught block could fetch a cycle of allied colors, then we got the enemy cycle out of Zendikar, our first trip to Zendikar, which allowed us to then fetch enemy colored basics. And having to choose which basic to go grab with a bunch of those lands potentially going from the potential of fixing for two colors down to a more narrow range where you get one color out of your basic, not so bad, still pretty good, provided a little bit of deck thinning, but provided an interesting choice. However, in Commander, fetch lands specify that they can get lands of a particular basic land type, not just basic lands. So yes, you can go and grab your ABUR duels, you can grab your shock lands, which means that paradoxically, the inclusion of fetch lands allows high color decks to almost get better fixing than low color decks. So our sans red deck that we talked about last week with Spleenface, has a lot easier of a time assembling its colors than even a two-color deck in a lot of cases. So a Marsh Flats that we talked about last week could go from just getting a Plains or a Swamp to any of Godless Shrine, Hallowed Fountain, Temple Garden, Watery Grave, or Overground Tomb, ballooning a choice from two colors of mana to five possible color combinations. Between Shocks and ABR duels, fetch lands trivialize much of the color fixing of your deck in these high-color situations without needing any significant tempo cost. You're getting both the fetch land itself and then the land you fetch with it into play untapped for a paltry life cost, making the package basically a no-brainer to run. And this is the state of high-color decks in CDH. The low tension enabled by 
basically perfect mana, with a low cost investment in commanders, it essentially means that you do not actually have to achieve a very diverse mana base in order to get your basic game plan off the line. While this episode may come across as a little bit of spitting hot takes and complaining that back in my day, color identity used to mean something, dagnabbit, quite frankly, it does allow an interesting diversity into the metagame. Fetches, shocks, and duels provide a powerful and consistent base for mana fixing, while high color commanders with a low color co casting cost allow almost no real restrictions in card selection without needing to sacrifice the investment and the inherent value of having easy access to a powerful piece in the command zone. Instead of, ugh, Chromat, these decks can cast a turn two Timna and start drawing cards right away, or land an Ajila to start the warrior countdown or the combo threat. The choice to play lower color decks usually centers around something unique that a monocolor partner or a specific legendary creature offers in terms of their win condition or play styles. Because there's certainly very little cost in tension and deck building in order to play lots of colors in CDH. So if you're looking to optimize one of your decks in casual, you can certainly look to some of the mana bases in CDH, well, if you either have the cards already, or if your group is open to proxying, or if you want to save some money going to FusionGamingOnline.com, your source for all your gaming needs. That 5% off from using the promo code mm, could save you a pretty penny. But that's the reason why you see so many 4 and 5 color decks at the top of the CDH metagame. Between those fetch lands, shock lands, ABUR duels, coupled with those partners who have a very low mana cost, particularly in terms of colored mana investment, it's very easy to get your game plan going early, easily, and consistently. And it's also part of the reason why, personally, I was so happy to see the monocolored cycle of partners come out in Commander Legends. I think it added a lot of really interesting options in three color decks. It, some of them are at the top of the metagame in their own way, like Rograk, Silas. We did a whole episode on why Rograk was so powerful with that cost of zero, but still accessing red color identity and turning on a lot of interesting cards. And while I am a brewer who really likes to explore some commander-centric win cons, and I really like focusing on two and three color decks, next time I'm going to come back with a four color sans red deck. And I don't want to alarm you, but I may have built a four color partner deck without Timna. If you want to reach out to us, you can reach us on Twitter where we are at GemstoneMindMTG. You can send us an email to gemstonemindpodcast at gmail.com, or you can find us on YouTube where we are part of Commander Cookout Media Group. Until next time, I'm John, and this is Gemstone Mind.